Hello and welcome. I do a lot of videos at times, and I guess this is another one of those times. As I, I'm looking to make a trade right now, it has it's not coming through. It might. It's a ratio trade. I'm trying to buy Litecoin. And the move making it go higher doesn't make it easy, to, or makes it harder, of course, if Litecoin's rallying. But the move it just had here, where... We have this upward trend, and all of a sudden, here we go, it's boom. Down from the 890, 8,905 handle to 87.26. A little over 2%. This move here from this low, 8.806 to 88.82, that's a differential of like, uh, close to a percent. So it's not the biggest of moves seeing this happens, but what I'm trading this against is Komodo, where that's what... I'm looking to sell Komodo for such. Komodo has been an up move lately. It's had this little uprise in. And now it's getting close to the area. Now, how I like to look at this is there's a couple reasons why I don't want to use Bitcoin as a means to an end for the trade, rather Ethereum. Let's uh, take a look. KMD ETH. And look at this on this here. So right now I might as well put a alert in for myself. Five thousand and seventy-one. So I'd alert to break that. If it goes from this point, that's a differential of a little over one point two percent. But at the same point, I do have to keep my eye on Litecoin. And I got extra alerts on here, so if if Litecoin makes this pattern break out, that's just gonna hurt the ratio trade. And it looks like it might just do that. So I got a one percent gain and I kinda wanna get I mean this is this is but as this is pretty high enough as it is. What's one percent on top of this? Well I would need this to go well, eight eighty seven. So another eight, we're talking like eight ninety something. So if it starts to come up towards here then I'm going to want to know. Because then I'm going to have to have to up my offer. I'm going to increase my bid number on the Commodium Ethereum cross. Now, at the same time, what happens if we get a failed breakout on this move that just occurred here? And really, this whole this whole correctionary phase as well. For, I mean, like, one, one, like two large candles down, really one, I mean, one candle. It was down 1.73% in this entire minute. And then a hair a bit more down to the 8726 that followed into the next one. But it hurried its way back up. Sure did. Hurried its way back up to the 18 lows. Started to grind it down a little bit, so you're in that correctionary mode. Really just turning neutral more than anything. And, uh, well, this totally locks the neutrality in on this point here. Enough to ban flatten out. And there's the breakdown spot. Coming down, now there was no failed breakdown at all because it actually succeeded its test of the twice hit or multiple hit level of support here. Looking at this, of course, within the time frame. So whether you're looking at the numbers like this on one minute or I'm going to look at it in the three day and look at this that way, it's the, the, the analysis is pretty much all the same. Obviously, the volatility is going to coincide with its time frame. So the, the failed move below the 18 most certainly got rejected immediately and then three three candles up obviously volatility lower as well from here but that's that's normal you have an uh, you have a monstrous volatility session you have a monstrous volatility comeback and then it settles in a bit and now we're starting to have some more normal moves so now is this one little hit a uh, failed is this a this has got the potential to failed breakdowns possibility it did keep break down this key level of support and i haven't looked at four minute term time frames or the 15 to see how it's going to look and i will but for now, on the one, I know it's established this level of resistance. If I want to play in any breakout pattern, I'm day trading this in any form. Then there's no need for me to go long until I see some sort of break above this, especially if I do margin trading, which I don't do. But in any type of form that I want to play on any type of short-term setup, and I'm looking for a setup, well, that's now available in here. But with that being said, I already know as a day trader again, if I got the availability to short a market, that I see this rally attempt after the selling in here. 
And we have been in selling for pretty much the day. This is at the price action. Last time it's been in the 88 handles, pretty much near the bottom at the uh, start of the year. So it's already in that bear market territory, of course, with the Bitcoin dominance. And Litecoin is like went down to 100. But throwing that part aside, we're talking about doing the ratio trade with one versus the other. And the big prices and low prices will mean things when it does. And for me, a larger prices means you look to liquidate. You don't liquidate at 100 right now. But as far as this is concerned, okay, we're just going to stick in this uh, neutrality range. Let's take a look at some other time frames and see what we come up with this. So here's, uh, this is that key level of support here. Here you have a lower high rally to this, and now you break down below it. Are we resisting this level from the break lower, or are we setting up a failed breakdown? It's like an either-or situation. And amongst that possibility, we see we came up to this high, so it's had a good correctionary mode, and now back to low. What do we see right now? Currently, with 23 seconds left in a four-minute period, so pretty much the end, it's held that rally, rally really well to work it towards the neutrality, because has the band flattened out yet? No. The 18 average of lows will start to... If in a couple of periods, if it can get a bit of momentum, and let's see, maybe a little bit now in here, barely. 15-minute term, do we get anything on this? And, well, this was a much bigger price hit from earlier today when it went down to the 82 handle. Well, since then, this correctionary move, and it's still in that situation. It established this resistance pretty much where my alert line is. Or exactly there almost. And then this move. Is this a failed breakout? Maybe. For it hasn't clearly taken out this level of support where the price is now, I and mean, that red line is. It's it's hanging onto it like a thread. You start to see momentum going lower, it's gonna be leaving the eighteen lows. And then you start talking about a test of the previous, uh, well, the lows from just, again, the one-minute time frame. Te te talking about testing these previous lows. Of course, now on the one, you see how it's making managing to make an attempt to break this out, break, go higher. Just going to take a quick look at Komodo. It's just going down, so... It's unlikely that my theory... I mean, I need someone to do like one of those spoof buys or whatever for me to get right now. So it's unlikely to happen. I mean, it could. But that's the whole point of like putting this in the market order game is just... I mean, that's just one strategy you could just live by. And that is always having a buy and sell order at specific spots so that uh, it's always a good amount from fair price. Meaning... If price action all of a sudden says, uh, say it goes up to here, and then it just holds, then you're going to, like, whatever, you have to increase your sell order a little bit. And then you get the spots where you're just going to take, because the price action goes somewhere, you just take the number as it is. But um, just that's just one way you can do it. And then when you get those spoof buys and sells, you get the, bait tra the trade back like right off the bat. And then there's so many base currencies you can do that with, Ethereum, Binance Coin, Bitcoin, uh, some of the dollar tethers as well. And some of those other ones like the dollar tethers, the Ethereum, and the uh, Binance Coin can oftentimes give you those uh, quick little plays. I like how this is playing on the one right now. It's it's interesting. That's I mean, I didn't plan on actually talking about this amongst this level, but I didn't know what else I was going to talk about either. Let's see if the 18 lows can have any type of support test if the red's going to come down a bit. As, uh, what do we got left for time? Five seconds. Doesn't make too much of a difference because it's going to be a follow through in the next period, which is right now. Okay, no trade yet. How long does it take? We can see how long it takes. Four seconds. Four seconds for someone to trade on the Litecoin market. You can't see the trend line, but I mean, the, the obvious trend line from these lows here over the last like eight minutes. I mean, it's really at the bottom, and now we're at that 18 lows test. Barely a higher low to this one. 
You had this break it attempt, even another one here. Uh, this one rejected it worse. And it's not holding the lows the greatest right now, but it's still hanging in there. Definitely cautionary signs that this uh, could be ready to uh, tip over. Uh, we'll just take a look again at these other time frames as we were going on. As I was saying in here, like just hanging on within this 18 average price action falling below here. This is a bearish sign breaking down below this low in here. One hour time frame, the band is just barely starting to flatten out. And that's because it's had sustained amount of time within this range. And it's almost a price correction doing its thing. But this is an ass kicking move going down. Going down from this 10.5 uh, handle down to about the 82. And then on the three hour, it's even a little higher than that. So this failed rally attempt obviously broke this support. We had this level of support in here. Uh, so far, this is where it resisted it there. And on the eight hour time frame, on the long, even more longer term level, losing more than half its value. Or in that area of such. From about 18 below nine. Close to 18. What was the actual high in here? High was 17756. So, yeah, pretty much half its value. We can see what happened with this failed rally here. You have a big move down, you get above, and there's the grinding high. You're showing strength amongst the 18 average of highs, but not every time you show strength, it's going to do it, as we can see here. 18 average fails its test miserably. 18 lows not supported. It did make the higher low and it did consolidate within it, within the lower end, but lower end being the lows, not the highs. But it, it never really did have any real rally attempts. There was this mediocre one in here and really nothing in here just held in the, with microscopic volatility. And then when it came down for the support test in here, it really hung around there with low volatility for a couple of days, but you could see as it was leaving the support, the size of the red candles got a little bit bigger. So now we're at a point where now there's levels or something as, as an area that you'd be looking for as resistance. It's still got a long ways to go just to meet up with the 18 average. And I guess since we're talking about Litecoin, I'm just going to take a quick look at the one minute before I uh, venture off to the long term and here we go I mean I guess we won't I guess we won't go right now to the long term we'll do a quick little update on the one minute obvious major sideways consolidation and when this was going to happen you're not you're not you don't know what the if it's going to range you don't know where exactly it's going to be but we do we know now we have all of these hits at 88 10 here area we have another layer of support here at 88 29 in this ballpark area here. That's what's just coming off of right now. Now it's been hit two times just since this level. It was also hit a few times in here and it was also congestion there. So a lot of activity in that point. Resistance, we can see this line that we're at now. We resisted it here. The more bigger level of resistance, however, would be between 8857 handle and then it would be a double raise because you got this exact high, this really this exact high level at 88.64. And the biggest one being 88.81 area within it. But the last move that got to the highs has just been automatically rejected. And a lower high coming in there. There's now more concern, of course, that we could be having this failed move. But it hasn't done anything to break it yet because... Uh, even though it's just going down, there's a red candle like this. It still hasn't taken out this low. The 18 average is nowhere near failing at this point. Anyway, let's go for longer term time frame. And uh, we'll do this by doing a different exchange. Apollo X always works good because they got all this stuff going back to the uh, uh, start of the day. So this is Apollo X here. So look at the difference there on the one minute. It's just a totally different trading game when you look at its volatility but this way what I can now start to venture off into uh, some other time frames even in April this thing got up to a little higher than this 18 number but uh, failed breakout yeah you could say that three-day time frame 
And look, yeah, the, so the lows at the start of the year, 68. So that's where the bigger lows are. Uh, just out of curiosity, what kind of Fibonacci number did we hit? We had, uh, I'll go 6,903 as a low. I'll do my Fibonacci calculator up. And then we'll pick the high, which looks around that 20 number. Or, or actually, not even close. 1899, we'll just go uh, 1880. So the 38.2 is the 10 number, the 23.6 is 87.44. So it's managed to have but the, a full deep pullback for a higher low when you were give, given back 76.4% of the gains. A lot of times in markets like this, it kind of gets a little concerned. But if you're dealing in choppy environments, which, which we totally are, then that's a different story. Now this is almost like a ratio in a way as far as it's it's the way it should be moving because is Bitcoin, is Litecoin, Bitcoin the primary market people trade or is it Litecoin and the dollar? Referring of course to Litecoin. I don't know. It, uh, a lot of this is reflected to what Bitcoin does and its individual moves against the dollar as well of course Litecoin's individual moves that it has against the dollar. So we go in the weekly, monthly, or we actually go to three day, we already did the three day. So within the weekly time frame, here's a lot of its choppiness from this move. Now, as far as a technical aspect is it, from a point A low and the point B high, what has happened since? We have had a retest, a quick retest of its high and then a very good pullback, and then an extremely fast move to first pierce below it, and then pretty quick after that, oh, not as fast, of course, it had a pierce above, but, but it's a matching level, so there's a, another hit, but uh, just a, a vicious collapse over time. These ones are better for trading aspects because you get the job done fast as far as buybacks compared to here, and... Uh, Anyway, so it hit that level. So now we had this level get supported test first, like the 99 level. So that, we'll say the 10. It was big support. It then even lowered it a little bit. But this little move, which was again retested in here, just reestablished the level of support that really around the 70 handle is that uh, point of view. And this move in here was a noticeably large pierce below this level as an attempt to enter this point and of course we're retesting this and it's pierced below this we're now back in this little range in here which is a range between the 100 and that 70 number but in the monthly time frame when looking at this I'm always stating a spot where you get above the 18 highs like this this the 18 lows is really as deep as it goes and it can still technically hold and stay above it but Throwing that aside, let's uh, first no notify that this little tw twick line, we'll ignore that it didn't, didn't. It might have happened, you might have got it, it was one of those uh, whatever buys kind of deal. But this high in here was a key one. And I know I don't have 18 average before then, but it's pretty obvious to tell that this low, the price action was getting above it, so it was below the 18 lows. And it really was in the band and above the band. Uh, that, that, that's, and that's on the start history. When you, I know there's no technical band up here, but based on price action, you can see how that would work out. This was a real move, going above the band. Now this wasn't, but this was obviously a real move. So one leg lower on the, the 18, and it bottoms. And then this has one leg higher over it. And then a microscopically short, small move below it. Not as short, but or, or, but still a few periods it goes above it. Uh, definitely a decent amount of periods below it again. A small but a tradable amount below. And now it's just entering the below stage again. So that's why when I'm thinking a lot of times I want to see it hold. Well, this is what it's been doing the whole time, above and below. But meanwhile, as it's been doing that, we still do have this trend line. We, As far as resistance is concerned, it's that, but... 
can almost, because of this last lower high, you can start to consider drawing trend lines like that now. And that's now getting us into a symmetrical situation as far as this while it's been doing all this choppy action. Now this type of choppy moves, when it keeps on doing this, this is an amazing situation for the strategies that I talk about as far as buying and selling coins because your, your situation where you would be at if you just buy and sell this way uh, here, we could, even going back in here. If you were trading this back then and you're buying low, selling high everything, and you buy here, and after, after this we'll do a one minute update. I'm just reminding myself to do it, but uh, after I'm done talking about this subject here. But yes, and then you buy here, you're in better shape than you were here. And even for that matter, let's talk about how you were here on, on your, because out here you have a lot less Litecoin than you, you have a lot of Bitcoin and a lot less Litecoin. And the opposite is true as it's going down. Because here you're selling Litecoin for Bitcoin, and in here you're selling Bitcoin for Litecoin, and you're and all the stuff you've been buying, your the ownership you have here is much better here than it was there, and then the ownership you have here is much better here than it was in here, and then when we go up here, your ownership is most certainly better here than it was back in there. Same thing can be so said here for here. Same thing again for here compared to here. Again. And again, here to here even for that matter. Definitely, this might be just as good or whatever, but that's the whole point of the, the swing trading is that your market would either be matching highs or probably new highs, really. It'd probably be new highs. And the same thing in here now, you're like, you got a noticeable high or low every time. So if the market does manage to come down to 73.6 or whatever this, this uh, line range that I'm talking about is, you're in better shape here than you are. So as, if the strategy can keep just doing this type of stuff for a while, then it's going to work out in the long run. And, and to put that in perspective, if you're doing that in here and the market just happens to go down in here, if it were to do something like that, then you're technically better off here than you were back here because of all the trading you would do. Or in another sense, you've profit taken well along the way, especially when you consider times against the dollar, right, right in here, and actually right in here basically, times against the dollar where it was time to just profit take, and then of course you would do pretty good. So let's uh, remove this and go back to the Binance exchange and see how look at that buy back then that is just crazy first off let's take a look at the hour term time frame just yet grinding lower still and then this price action is well below that line so yeah, there's that breakdown it does it I mean it's fast it does it all, all the time so a spot like this now as a trader for Komodo on this, I can now start to lower my Komodo sell orders if I so choose. If Komodo's rallying higher, I could consider making a trade, but then I'd be like, okay, well maybe what I'll do is if Komodo looks in a sell spot and it looks toppy, then I'll sell, but I'll wait to buy Litecoin because it looks to here, it's like a day trade, like almost like a short, if you will. And instead of buying it at 879, I'll try to buy it maybe here at like say 873. That's just a little bit of a difference. And if I look at say maybe a well, 15 minute term time frame, you could be looking to go 862. And you know what? I might even do stuff at that. I got stuff at that at times. I got to do a bit more of that here and there. I'm playing the safe route is just always taking market price. And obviously, if you're a truck driver doing that, you don't do anything like what I'm talking about here, trying to. Uh, better your ratio is another way of putting it. But let's take a look at Komodo. Maybe maybe we're having a dartboard sell-off. I don't know. And 15-minute time frame. It's having a correctionary mode as well. So at this stage, that really kind of counteracts the Litecoin move down. And you can see there, yeah, I mean, it's so... If anything, it's down even a bit more as well. And it's 12.10 a.m., so what's probably going to happen is I'm just going to have to 
uh, delete that order and just put it at an insane level because I'll be going to bed. And the trade didn't work out, but that's, just, that's fine. Uh, unless, of course, it breaks out in the next 10, 15 minutes, whatever. It's uh, 12, 10 a.m. Uh, as of the time of this. There we can see the 0, 0, 10. So I'd have to uh, just pretty much that order to delete. Put it at like a whatever insane number. If it hits, it hits. It never usually does. And then just wake up in the morning and what's going to happen is I'm going to have all of these... Uh, i got a lot of them that I'm going to have to do. I mean, I can get rid of this one. And I suppose I can get rid of this one as well, too. And when I wake up, probably some of these are going to hit. I'm going to wake up, I'll, go, I'll see a bell. This will tell me at least how many coins, at least from this group of lists that I have, are entering into a uh, a situation of, uh, well, well, they at least at one point were tradable for a ratio number uh, at least a couple percentage higher. Like minimum on the, the, the scale is like 9, 10%. Hopefully Komodo can maybe break something through here as Litecoin has a short-term sell-off. Because it looks like... But, you know, Litecoin's recovering, though. Oh, yeah, this would be cool if it does it. And you know what? Do I pause the tape just for something to do? Hmm, man. 26 minutes right now. I know if I just go on... I, I know this. If I don't do it, I know we're looking at 40 minutes if things just keep on happening in 45 minutes, and I don't want to do that. Um, but I'll talk about the situation as it played out. Plays as it is playing out. At least at my time frame. Okay, a yeah, major, major, major level of support right here. And from the uh, starting from the upper end, in a very quick period of time, it goes below it. It even resisted for a few periods, two, three minutes. But then for three minutes, boom, boom, boom. Doesn't resist the lows. Doesn't really resist the highs. It's now supporting it. Okay, this interesting game here. Things can get wild here, at least on this time frame. So to me, it's either going to explode high or explode low. Because this is either a real sell-off, it's having its uh, lower high rally to this here. It's not too, it's pretty, pretty as high as it gets for a lower high rally. And then it just breaks down. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is <laughs> this failed breakdown. So given that this is an educational purpose video, it's 12.13. I don't mind staying up till 1. I got up at 10 o'clock this morning, and I had to go in town today to do stuff. That's okay, though. That's okay. It's been a long time. So that's the first time I've probably slept until 10, probably, like, in this type of nature of sleeping. Even for whatever, for like a long time, years. Which is okay. Okay, I like how it's holding this 18, and I don't want to spend, again, too much time dibbling, dabbling about this move. But one of the things that uh, my teacher, Brian Shannon, from alphatrends.net, I started watching videos like this, that his style, of course, back in 2007. That's almost 12 years ago now. It would have been uh, probably August, maybe. It was, in the, it was August, September. So it's almost that 12-year anniversary. And one of the things he'd always say is always adjust to the message of the market. And here we have it. If it just keeps diddling and dallying around, obviously the sideways range is becoming very established. One little small pierce above in here. I can draw a second line in. And it does look like it's time to pause the taste. But it is rejecting this breakout pretty fast. Pretty darn near fast on this rejection. And so now you just got extended range because of the twice hit level. This one here. So the, I'm not going to draw a line on this one. But around uh, 8883. And then here at 8785. Now it's supporting the upper end of it, which used to be the end. And not the end, like the movie, whatever. 
but it's obviously not supporting it. At least, if it is, it's going to be a pierce below. If it does support this, from the last previous key low in here, it's a higher low, which is something that needs to be productive after this rally attempt that happened two, three, four minutes ago. And it's had its quick comeback. So as we've analyzed this, there's no need for me to pause this tape now, although it's going to be relatively quick, probably, in helping us determine if it's resistance or if it's going to be some sort of stabilization. And it looks relatively weak on the early stages here. The odds do favor that this level is going to give in. Probably have a fast move, again, down to this first previous low. From there, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And when I say fast, I mean, if, there we are, there we are, here we have it. We're having it right now. Usually one that would take about, like, well, what's taking so long now? This is around the time. And, and you know what, if it happens in the next, right now we've got 19 seconds to go. If it happens in the next, like, 11 seconds, whatever. But from this point on, after hitting this level of support, there we are, we have it. After hitting the support, now we got that now what situation. Either quick move up to this 88.10, but this thing could go on to decent free fall. Uh, right now we are getting this little bit of support in here, just that little bit, because now we've already been a little bit pierced below this level. And there we have it. This could be a fast move, and this has got the potential to be so. This is why I don't want to pause the tape just to see a live situation. I'll just end the video after this move comes in because right now we're 31 minutes and yet another long video that I was like yeah didn't plan on it but uh, here we go so we've already made the statement that it's uh, going to be making a leg low or it's going to be going down to previous low previous low down in here is 87.25 now I'm looking at this 18 and this line in here to be resistance if there's going to be any rally attempts I'm expecting volatility to be high we are having some decent sized volatility. Now it's a clear breakdown below this level. And here we go. Here's that decent sized move. It's always pretty fast. What is it down right now? It's down 0.44%. It can be a lot faster. Now the minute is over. We're now piercing above this. That's market dynamics. Now even the next level of resistance is what I stated before, but that's the upper part of the resistance band. The next level, if it's going to happen quick, is this. And if you're using the, if you're trading the one minute, we already know the key level of support is here. It's already pierced above. It could hit it exactly or exactly ish, and it could pierce below. We, it's having an okay move, but we were on high volatility, as I just mentioned. That's what we're expecting to have happen. If this is it for the rally, that's a lame ass volatile move right now, and we're talking about this low and probably breaking it. And if we're talking about breaking it, and then we'll probably start talking about some Fibonacci from this high and this low. 91.28 is that number. And don't be surprised if it does something like that and it's going to hit the 38.2 or the 61.8% down number. Uh, what was this low in here? This low is uh, uh, 81.86. So I'm looking at, the, well, 61.8 was 87.56, which... Uh, is what, so what's already that this that was that support here, so that's why I've been played. So 8534. That would be one of the areas that I'd be looking for on the trader here. If this mark doesn't go through, then that and then that could take that could happen fast. That could take a half hour uh, of, on a situation of the breakout. Of course, now within this minute in here, it is testing. This low pretty good. I guess the easiest way to see it is this way here. As far as just where we are. This is now pretty much an exact hit now. Ish. It's done that. We've had consecutive red downs. Major mode. And it wasn't a surprise that was going to happen. As Of course, I was talking about that. Uh, showing that it was, uh, as I, as was happening. But at this point, this is one of those now what's, or this is one of those I hate situations. Usually I talk about it in the opposite end, but this is the polar opposite of it. You have a move to a key level. It hasn't been there for a while. The move there to get there was probably a convincing move, well extended away from the 18. It's always that way, pretty much, and again it is. So what do you do now? 
Uh, maybe hang in there for a while. That's what's happening right now. Maybe have a little bit of a rally on a bear market point and just come up to this range I talked about between uh, 87 and 86 up to here. And that's both bullish and bearish because who knows from that point if it's going to be a successful correction because it's going to be meeting up within that declining 18. And if this level doesn't support and we start breaking down, you start to see it going down to 87.10, you probably realize it's going to go down even further. And just like we've seen here live, at least on this, as I was showing it, is you, you would be basically expecting quick move. So now we're having this correctionary phase from that leg lower. We've, we've hit it now. We've hit the 18 lows. We still haven't hit that key, those key numbers that I talked about. Now we have. We're into the 18, approaching the 18 average of closes. And technically we kind of almost are because now we are. Now our next level of resistance is the 18 average of highs. The market is making a statement. And the statement that it's making, I just got my ass kicked to that previous low. In that situation you don't like, well, now we're moving up. So the question is, are we having a failed breakdown? Or are we doing what markets do? Markets go up, markets go down. Lower highs, lower lows. Path of least resistance is lower. And... Uh, and then we always have correctionary moves, and that's what we're in. But as we're playing this out on the one, it's already starting to show weakness on the on the lows. So now we're having cautionary, like the weakness or the the cautionary signs of what I talk about of breaking down below and having a move that's going to lose about a little over two percent from this low is very live now. When you look at this via the one minute time frame. And it's extremely live just seeing how it's just leaving it as it is, leaving the 18. And I'm going to finish off this video because it's 40 minutes, but before we do that, I'm just going to show you what I can do. You know what? Hmm. I want to show the reverse of this because I know how to do it, but I always go back to this. So to show the reverse of this, I can go BTC and then USD, and let's just take this. And Bitcoin, it's also going down the one minute term time frame as well. So against the dollar, Litecoin's even losing more as well, which is unfortunate, but you know what? Markets go up and down. That is all part of the game. We're going to divide this by Litecoin, and we're going to do this against the dollar here. We'll guess we'll use... Uh, Bitstamp here as well, given it's the same exchange, although it shouldn't make a difference. So it doesn't look as good, but we're getting the polar opposite there. Now we know the ratio 114, and, and, and we're going to see the same sort of deal here. Breaking out above this level of resistance. And like we said, there we are, back to this key level, back to the 18 where it came from. But yeah, it's uh, here we go. Now this is going to go up. Just let's just see how this goes. I think it's going to look better on the normal Litecoin chart now. So let me just bring that up and record for a few more minutes. But this is where the markets can go down really hard, really fast. And let's see if this is any example of such. I will, again, I will end this very soon. And I'm getting alerts for other markets. So my Ethereum Classic Theta Cross is having some moves. But there's large volatility playing at it is. And we've seen how it wasn't a surprise as it was leaving the 18 average of lows. So if I want to get really funky, I could have just sold a bit and just bought it back now. Just a quick little scalp, just like that, if I wanted to. I could have. Of course, technically I couldn't have because I have literally none on any... Uh, maybe on Poloniex I might have some. I think I have some on Poloniex. I don't have much there. But you have that fast move. So now another quick rally attempt, 18 lows is the next point and all that stuff but I'm gonna conclude this video at that because that's just gonna keep going on and on and on thank you for tuning in have yourself a great day bye bye